My name is Oscar Perez. I work for Mosaic as the Premium Products Manager for the International Sales Market. Uh, we are here today with Dr. Fred Villo, who has been recognized globally uh, for his seven wonders of the corn yield world and the six secrets of successful soybean production. Dr. Fred Billow is a researcher and also a professor at the University of Illinois for the last 35 years. Uh, we're very grateful to have him here in Argentina. I want to thank you, Fred, for accepting this invitation and sharing with us um, the latest on current soybean uh, crop management. Fred, your last visit uh, to Argentina was around six years ago. Uh, what's your general impression among agronomists and farm producers after visiting Argentina again? What I noticed this year, Oscar, is that there's a lot more optimism among the growers. And they're, based on the attendance at our meetings, they were really anxious to learn things about what they could do to increase their maize and soybean production. Great. That's really good. Fred, uh, we noticed that among your seven wonders of corn uh, production, other than nitrogen, you don't um, have the other nutrient listed. May I know why? Yeah, this is because for soil fertility is really important for high maize yields, but I listed it as a prerequisite. We were relying on growers having adequate soil test values so that those nutrients would be released at the right time. I guess if there's anything I need to alter in the Seven Wonders is to really, really focus on making sure that those growers are actually applying enough nutrients in season to produce the yields that they're capable of. And especially important is to make sure that they're replacing the nutrients that they are removing. And so while I have fertility as a prerequisite, it's becoming more and more important to reach high yields to make sure that they actually have adequate fertility. Okay, the world record of corn is around 34.1 tons per hectare and, and we notice in the U.S. it's, uh, it's around 11.1. Uh, Here in Argentina, the, the average, sorry, the average um, national um, production for corn in, in the U.S. is around 11.1 and in Argentina it's around 7.5. Um, what do you think uh, we are needing to fill that gap? Why is, is that gap? One of the biggest differences that I see between production in Argentina and, and in the U.S., the reason that there's such a large difference, it's not the genetics, it's not the row spacing, it's not the protection. What I think it all comes down to is the uh, soil fertility. I think the U.S. growers have higher initial soil fertility. They manage their soils better. Over the, over the decades, and I think that they're a little more aggressive in how they fertilize the crop. I think one of the things that Argentine growers are lacking the most is having enough fertility right up front to get that plant off to a good start. And this is one of the messages that we tried to bring to the audiences that we spoke to uh, while, we, while, while I was here. So that, that's pretty, pretty well said, because the genetics are kind of similar I think even the row spacing is kind of similar, so we just need to get an extra mile to, to add those nutrients. Absolutely. I mean, they have, the, they have the same genetics. Actually, Argentine farmers have already adopted the narrow rows, so they've already put them at an advantage compared to the U.S. growers. And I think one of the things that they're lacking is they're not quite planting enough plants. They're worried about the weather, and then when they plant more plants, they actually have to make sure that they have enough plant nutrition to, uh, to grow, to be, able to, to, to be able to support each of those plants. So when they go into high plant density, certainly um, there is going to be a smaller root system. That's the way you, you taught us in this, in this trip. And how they have to fertilize in order to feed that smaller root system? Yeah, as you increase the density of plants, each plant has a smaller root system. And that means plant nutrition is way more important. And they, these include technologies to make sure that you can manage that root system. Things like placing the fertilizer in a line near or under where that root system is going to be. Also important are fertilizer technologies. Fertilizers like uh, Micro Essentials SE that provide what, what is called balanced nutrition. I mean, now when a root 
gets near that fertilizer granule, it has four nutrients. And so if you have a smaller root system, putting that fertilizer in the right place, using the right source, these are crucial to be able to manage those higher density of plants. Yeah, I think if, if I remember well, you mentioned among all your research work, there are six nutrients that stand up to grow high yield corn. And uh, I do remember those six key nutrients you mentioned, nitrogen, phosphate, potash, sulfur, zinc, and boron. Out of those six nutrients here in Argentina, the farmers, because the soils have so far good amount of uh, potash and also a certain amount of boron. So there are four nutrients that they need basically here to grow good corn. And, and uh, you mentioned that those remaining four key nutrients are found evenly distributed in a single granule called the one that you mentioned, that product, microessential zinc. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, so it's a, it, it's a pre, what I'm going to call a premium phosphorus fertilizer. So phosphorus is the main ingredient to microessentials SC, but it also contains sulfur and zinc. And a, and a beautiful thing about this fertilizer is that uh, these nutrients are evenly distributed within the granule. That means that I get uniform distribution of all four key nutrients. It's not easy to apply zinc evenly at the small amounts that are necessary over the field. So when I can apply it in microessentials SC, I get even distribution, I get four key nutrients. I also get the advantage of season-long sulfur availability. So the sulfur that's in microessentials SC is half element, has half elemental sulfur and half sulfate. So not only do I get sulfur right from the very beginning, but I actually have a season-long release of sulfur. So it's that season-long availability of sulfur, premium phosphorus source, the zinc, and a little bit of nitrogen. Um, I get the four key elements that, uh, that I actually think that, that maize needs. One of the important things that we, we, we have seen, and you probably uh, mentioned that one too, is even in soils that have high phosphate levels, or relative high phosphate levels in the soil, it still shows that difference in yield. And I think it's part of that you are describing where we have not just phosphate, but we have the right source of phosphate with the two forms of sulfur in the same granule and that zinc that is water soluble, the way I understand. When I see those pictures that you show us in this trip, uh, certainly highlights the difference among uh, the microessential versus uh, traditional source of phosphate like MAP or DAP. Yeah, again, I think the concept is to, uh, is to balance the nutrition, to balance all the key elements that the crop needs. And when I have adequate zinc, I can use the phosphorus better. When I have adequate phosphorus, I can use the sulfur and the nitrogen better. The, the, these are ways that the, that the plant gets off, grows better. It, it actually uses those nutrients better. Now, even, even though the soil test might be adequate, it does not guarantee that that soil releases those nutrients at the right time in the right rate. And this is especially true for immobile nutrients like phosphate and sulfur. So when I can have those in a granule, all in the same granule, in proximity to the root, then I'm going to assure, help assure, that those elements are released and available to the plant at the time that it needs it. Great. Let's talk a little bit about soybean. Uh, Argentina stands up for a large production uh, capacity of soybean, and the water record of soybean is around 11.5 tons per hectare. The national average of the U.S. is around 3.4. Here in Argentina, farmers are getting around 3 tons per hectare. Why do you think we have a large gap between the water record and soybean? Yeah, as, as we see in both the U.S. and Argentina, there's a huge yield gap in, in soybean yields, in, in what is possible and what the growers actually receive. And uh, even more, or even more than in maize, I think the problem with soybean is we're really not adequately providing the, the mineral nutrition that it needs. In the U.S., we fertilize the maize and we hope to leave enough left over for the soybean. No doubt we're shorting the soybean. In Argentina, I learned that you grow continuous soybean without always fertilizing it. I think the, the concept is that if I inoculate the soybean, I get good nodulation, I get enough N, then I, that's all I need. But that certainly isn't true. Soybean has other key elements that it needs. 
phosphorus and sulfur in particular. And when you remove the yields we are without replacing those elements, I think plant mineral nutrition and soil fertility is one of the biggest factors in that yield gap. Sure. You have developed the six secrets of success for soybean production. And we noticed that fertility ranks number two. You show us that phosphate and sulfur are pretty key. And why are those important and how farmers can apply those two uh, key nutrients like phosphate and sulfur to soybean? Yeah, one of the reasons that phosphorus and sulfur is so important to high soybean yield is they have, the soybean crop has to accumulate them season long. Not only do they have to accumulate those elements while they're making the vegetation, but they have to continue to accumulate phosphorus and sulfur during seed development and seed filling. Think about the soybean plant that flowers over a longer time period. I have to have phosphorus and sulfur available throughout the whole season. Another key factor about phosphorus and sulfur is that those elements at the end of the season have a high harvest index. So the harvest index refers to of the amount, the total amount of a nutrient that the crop accumulates, what percentage of it ends up in the grain. And if you think about it, elements that have a high harvest index where most of what the plant takes up ends up in the grain, those are pretty important to have a high grain yield. And phosphorus and sulfur are right at the top for harvest index. Uh, phosphorus has a harvest index of over 80% and sulfur has a harvest index of about 60 percent. So these are really important elements as we want to continue to produce high soybean yields. Absolutely. Here in Argentina, around 50 percent of the farmers uh, growing soybean do not apply anything to soybean, and the other 50 apply some. And I think you are right on with, uh, with, uh, with the recommendation for here too, that phosphate and sulfur are very critical how the farmers can apply that phosphate and sulfur and having a season loan that you explain us and you show us in those nutrient uptake curves that we need phosphate and sulfur for the season uh, loan of the crop. Yeah, well, Argentine farmers are, are blessed with the opportunity to, to purchase Microessentials S10. And Microessentials S, S, S9 has both phosphorus and sulfur, and the sulfur is, is designed so that a lot of it is in elemental form, and this and this allows the sulfur to be available season long. It's not it's not all lost, it's not used, it's not all available right at the beginning, but it can get that dose it needs early, and then the elemental sulfur releases later into the season when those developing pods and beans need it. That's great, great advice for for the farmers and for the agronomists. Uh, one thing we see the big picture, uh, the global production picture of the, the high producing countries like Brazil, US, Argentina, <coughs> and targeting uh, the markets like China. You know, when we go from Argentina or Brazil or US with the soybean to those markets, and in the future, I think uh, there is going to be some competition among the quality that we are bringing to those markets. So, what do you recommend to the farmers in Argentina? and also not just to produce good quality grain, but also to minimize losing organic matter in those soils. So uh, grain quality is a huge issue in today's uh, export market. Uh, growers are paid on yield, but in the export market, uh, export people look, all want to know the quality of the seed as well. And a sad fact is, as the yield goes up, the quality goes down. This is especially true on protein. Maintaining yield and protein at the same time, that's a difficult premise. And it all starts with better plant nutrition. Plant nutrition helps that plant not only increase yield, but also either maintain or improve the seed quality. Think about protein. A lot of nitrogen, a lot of sulfur. And so, so fertilizers that uh, can supply nitrogen, and especially season-long sulfur, play a big role in maintaining and, or even increasing the seed quality. That's a huge uh, factor in, in, maintaining, in maintaining the quality of the soybean seed. Now, some of the nutrients come from soil organic matter, but if you grow continuous soybean, it just doesn't produce enough soil organic, it doesn't produce enough residue to maintain the soil organic matter. 
and therefore the, the organic matter in the soil declines. And once the organic matter in the soil declines, you have less of a soil reservoir to help supply those nutrients, not only for yield, but also for grain quality. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any other advice to the agronomists or farmers here in Argentina that you want to leave before you depart back to the U.S.? Yeah, I would tell Argentine growers to, to continue to try to learn. Growers that I see that are successful, they're successful because they are willing to try things and learn from their experience. That is always the key to a high-yield grower. Try, it, try a little bit on their farm. See what happens. Learn from their successes and their mistakes. And then they can adopt what they've learned on their farms. So knowledge is power when it comes to producing high yields. And that's what I think I saw here today uh, with the, with, during my visit, that uh, growers wanted that knowledge. Absolutely. Yeah, I want to thank you, Dr. Fred Billow, for your visit. I think this country really appreciates all your knowledge. Thank you very much. My pleasure.